Today we're looking at an ESP32 and OLED project that you can complete today. We'll look at the simplest way to connect your OLED screen to an ESP32. No experience is necessary and I guarantee you'll have this working by the end of the video. Hi, I'm Christine and my channel is all about creating fun and creative wearable projects, things that you can make. I've also written a book about wearable technology, which is available at all good bookstores. In this video, we are going to cover the wiring and setup. We're going to have a brief code walkthrough. We're also going to look at some live demos. I've then got some fun ideas for things you might want to try with your own OLED. And lastly, we're going to have a look at the advanced hack. So this is something a little bit special right at the end of the video for you. We have a look at the components we need for this circuit. All we're going to need is our ESP32 and an OLED screen. I've also got this is a breadboard so that we can hook our components up together. With that, we're going to just need some hookup wire as well. These are the three, well, four components technically, unless we count every single wire, but four components that we're going to need. This ESP32 is just one of the standard dev modules. These you can get at all kind of electronics retailers, and it's just a great standard standard board to get our circuits up and working. Let's have a look now at the setup and our wiring. So this is a very quick step by step of how we're wiring these two components together so they work. So if we have a look at our Fritzing diagram that we've created here, we've got the SDA on our OLED board that is going to pin 21 on our ESP32. What you're going to want to do is find where it says SDA on our board here and just above it, anywhere in these tracks, just above it, because it all connects through, we're going to put our wire. So I might just pop it in here. Then on your ESP32, you are looking for pin number 21. My D21 is just up here, row 15 in this particular board. So I'm going to take the other end of my wire and and just pop it in straight above it. So it's on D21. There we go. First part is already done. So that is our data line, the SDA. Now let's look at the SCL, which means clock. So this is the next part of our circuit. I'm going to use a colored wire for these circuits, and then I'm going to choose black for ground and red for power. We're going to find SCL. We're going to go in the track just above it. So here is SCL, and this is the track above it, and I'm going to pop my pin in just there. And then if we look at our diagram, our pinout, we can see it's on D22. So we're going to find 22 on our ESP32 board, and then we're going to plug that in. And lastly, the easy part, which we won't even really need to look at, is we're going to have a red wire for power and black for ground. We're looking for 3.3 volt for power. So I'm going to take my red wire, we're going to pop it into the VCC, which is this one here. BCC. And then on my board, what we're looking for is 3.3V. So up at the top, I've got 3.3V. That's going straight in. And then you can probably see next to it, that is G and D. That is ground. You'll probably have more than one ground on your um, ESP32 board. So you can use any. I'm going to put my black wire in ground. There we go. And then that wire will just follow back through. Now with our four wires connected, we have the setup. So that's connected. Now we can plug in our board and put some code on it. So plugging in our screen, this has got just a simple test code running so we can see kind of some of the capabilities. We can see it's also one of the blue screens. We can get these in different colors. Just to point out as well, when you are hooking up these components, even if you buy what looks like similar modules, so these two look pretty similar, but actually they are a little bit different. Sometimes you can buy them and these are in slightly different order at the top. Always double check that this is the correct pin for the screen that you are using. What we'll do now is we're going to head over to our Visual Studio code and let's have a quick look at some of the things that we will need to do to get this working. So in Platform IO, we'll go to the home page. If you're doing the code in Arduino IDE, and the code is going to be the same, you'll just be loading it into the Arduino program. But in uh, Platform IO, we'll go to the Platform IO homepage, we'll click New Project. I'm going to call this one OLED ESP32. I'm then going to select my board, which is going to be an Espresso, and it's ESP32 dev module. Framework work is Arduino, and then I'm just going to switch my location. You might want to do the same for your project. Save it in wherever your code projects are being saved. And then once you 
you've chosen your folder, it'll then do some setup. So this can sometimes take a minute or so. It might take less, it might take more. It just depends on your personal configuration on your computer. Once that's set up, then we can go in our source folder and open main. It does come with some code here. We don't need that, so we'll just get rid. So I'm going to start with opening the initialization file. We are going to use some libraries so we can pop these in here and I'm just going to paste in. So we've got this Adafruit library that we're using the SSD 1306 library, and we're also using this graphics library. So both of those will be needed for our project. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to put in some code that I made earlier and this hopefully will just run some visual effects on our screen. We're not going to do huge complicated code to start with. At the end of the video, we are going to look at something a little special that we can add for controlling the OLED. But at the moment, just the regular code, some of the information you'll want to look at just to make sure it matches the screen you're using. Make sure you change the settings according to the screen you're using. So in my case, I've got 128 by 64, which is correct for what I'm using. I then also have my SDA and SCL pins defined. These are the defaults for this board, but it's a good idea to just check in and define your pins. Those are really the only bits of information you're going to want to change. When we load the code up, we're going to upload it to the board. Make sure that you've chosen your correct program. And then we have it's connecting. It is writing, which means it's just sending the information to our ESP32 and then hopefully we're going to see some little fun effects happening on the screen. And that means in sort of under five minutes, you've already got a working OLED screen and this was pretty simple and quick to hook up. So what are some fun ideas that you could maybe do with your OLED screen? There are many different things that we can do, including live data. So you might want to be streaming in temperature data or other important information to your screen. You might want to just use it to generate random inspirational quotes. Maybe it's something that you look at in the morning and it generates an inspirational quote for you to get on with your day. You could also, and I've seen some great projects where people are creating little retro games. So you might set up a Pong game on a device like this. That's a really super cute idea. A little bit more challenging because you'll have to get a little joystick set up, but it's worth the effort. So there's so many projects you can do. And I did have a previous video which mentioned ideas to help you get started for developing your wearable projects, just in case you weren't too sure how to generate ideas. So that might be one that you want to check out as well. It would be great if you could comment on how you have used your OLED devices before, or if you're new and this is the first time you're connecting up something like this, how would you use your OLED device in your project? So now let's have a look at doing something super special with our device. Most of us seem to have a mobile phone on us for communication and just general use. What we're going to do is we're going to hook into our phone. So this is making use of our ESP32, which has Wi-Fi on it. And we're going to connect to our phone so that we can type in a message that we'd like displayed on our screen. So on GitHub, there's going to be a new bit of code that you can download and add to your project. And this is the code that will enable you to connect to the Wi-Fi network in your house. So you'll have to just change your Wi-Fi name and password. And then what you're going to do is you will go to the address that comes on screen onto your device and then a web page will be displayed on your phone. You're going to get this as your screen and you're going to type in your message here. I might type in hello world and then we are going to send it message sent. And if we have a look at our screen that now says hello world. So this is a super fun part of the project. You can just go here. You can go back and change the message and you can just keep retyping different messages to your screen, but it just adds a really exciting element to your project. So next time you want to use an OLED screen an OLED, remember that you can also use your phone to write messages to it. Really fun. If you're interested in more projects like this, please do check out some of the demos I showed. I showed that fun hex code one, for example, using that screen. So those would be a great look at some videos for you.